don't scare me, but you should feel me. The sun is setting, don't trust your hearing. You made a monster, I'm your imposter. Go ahead and wander, but don't trust the water. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. I am back with another true crime video and today we are going to be doing the story of Hannah Cornelius. Now if you're new to the channel, I try to do these videos every single week. So definitely check out the playlist. I've done a couple already and I will be doing more in the near future. Now for this video, I've got a couple of disclaimers. This is literally one of the most traumatic videos that I've done for me. It is hectic. It deals with just a lot. It deals literally with everything. So if you know that you could be triggered, kindly step out of the video and check out my other videos that do not deal with such. And number two, I've been having trouble when uploading videos that are a bit long. So I might have a part one and part two. So please make sure that you first watch the part one and part two if I have it like that. And hopefully I don't end the videos in one piece. So without wasting any more time, let's dive into today's video. Today's video takes us to the Western Cape in Cape Town and subsequently Stellenbosch. Hannah Cornelius was born in Cape Town on the 12th of February in 1996 to Mother Anna Cornelius, who was an attorney and father Willem Cornelius, the magistrate in Cape Town and a younger brother who was unfortunately diagnosed with autism as a baby. Hannah came from an extremely affluent family, but they were also wholesome and loving in a tight-knit family of four. Hannah was especially close with her grandmother, who she would visit as often as she could. She went to Redham House Constantia Premium Private School, which is a private school mainly attended by children who come from very well-off families. Though Hannah obviously came from affluence, but she didn't let that get to her head. She was extremely humble and modest, and this was shown by the many choices that she made in life. An example of which, on her 16th birthday, her parents asked her what she would like, and they told her she could literally choose anything. And Hannah chose to do party packs for children in an informal settlement where Mr. Greg, where the gardener stayed. This would then be a tradition for all her birthdays going forward. Her 16th birthday fell shortly after her backpack, backpacking trip to India with her mother. And when we asked her what she would like to have for a birthday party or a birthday present, she informed us that she could not in good conscience spend money on herself while people around her were living in poverty. She made and we accepted her proposal to rather make up gift bags for the children in the nearby informal settlement. And she duly accompanied Mr. Kwekwe, our gardener, to Redio, where she dispensed her party packs. This was also how she celebrated her subsequent birthdays at home. Hannah was a straight A student who spoke English, Afrikaans and French fluently. And in 2014, she matriculated from Radham House with distinctions, where her peers would describe her as someone who had extremely positive energy and a passion for life. She then decided that she wanted to go to Stellenbosch University, which was just outside of Cape Town, which meant that she wouldn't be very far from her family. The general expectation in the family was that she was going to study law, considering both her parents did so. However, Hannah had other ideas and she wanted to study humanities and she presented a case to her parents. When she enrolled in the University of Stellenbosch, Hannah informed us, I must admit somewhat to our dismay, that she had absolutely no interest in pursuing a career in law. According to her, she wanted to do something that would actually help people. I hope that doesn't go wrong with the officers of this court. Uh, it wasn't quite clear exactly how she intended to achieve uh, that aim, but she presented a well thought out and eloquently argued plan for a future. She would major in languages, literature and philosophy, which she loved, and then pursue postgraduate studies in France. Before she left for university, she was gifted a blue city golf by her grandmother that previously belonged to her. Hannah had previously expressed to her how much she loved it so much and she was really, really happy about the gift. Not just because she genuinely liked the car, but because of the sentimental value of the fact that it belonged to a 91-year-old grandmother. This is someone who could literally have any other car that she wanted, but she chose a blue city golf. So this just shows you how modest and humble Hannah was. Me and her mother were immensely proud of raising a child for the new South Africa. A child without the baggage of our generation, with little interest in money, material things, with no prejudices regarding race, religion or social standing. 
a remarkable child on the cusp of becoming a remarkable woman. And in February of 2016, Hannah left for University of Stellenbosch and went be living alone for the very first time in her life. But her parents say that they weren't really worried because they knew the kind of child that they raised and they knew that she was responsible and a level-headed young lady. So they weren't really worried about that. And they also knew that she was only 50 kilometers away from Cape Town and she would be visiting any time that she had time and they too could do the same. Hannah indeed proved how responsible she was and passed all her first year modules very well and really her parents were extremely proud of her. In 2017 Hannah started her second year and unfortunately this would be the year that tragedy would strike. On Friday the 26th of May 2017 Hannah went out with her friends after a long week of lectures. Now Stellenbosch is a university town and it's always buzzing more especially on the weekends. So on this particular Friday night, Hannah went out with a few of her friends and they were partying around Stellenbosch like most university students do and allegedly they had an amazing night out. And however, around 2 a.m. in the morning, they decided to call it a night and they all went to their respective cars and were about to start missioning their way home. However, one of Hannah's friends, Cheslin Marsh, did not have a car. And actually, he literally used to ride around Stellenbosch in his skateboard during the day and had actually taken out his skateboard with him that particular night. He was going to ride his skateboard home and it was not a far distance from where they were. But I, Hannah insisted that, no ways, you're not going to be on a skateboard at this time of the night. I'm going to drive you home and drop you there. And because she was insisting, Cheslin obliged and they made their way to Cheslin's place. And they got into the car, like I already said, and they made their way to Cheslin's place. Now, Cheslin's place, like I already mentioned, wasn't very far from where they were. So they got there pretty quickly. And you can actually see Hannah's car going towards the parking lot just outside of Cheslin's place. You can see it right over there. It's a blue city golf, like I already mentioned. So they park there for a little bit and they start a conversation. As you normally do when you're dropping someone off, you'll talk a bit and then the person will get off. So while they were talking in the car, four men from a nearby township walked past the car. The men's names are Venon Vidboy, Geraldo Parsons, Ebron van Nergek, and Nashville Julius. You can see the four guys completely walk past the car. It was later revealed that one of the men actually said to the group that, no, let's go back to that blue city golf. It's going to be very easy for us to break into it. Plus, it's going to sell pretty quickly in the township. So they decided to turn back and go back to the city golf.